Question 12. Three containers with some water are shown below. Which container has the most water and which container has the least? We can solve this kind of question using units method. Focus our attention on the longer lines of each container. Let's start off with container X. Container X has five of those longer lines. So that represent five units. Convert one liter into milliliters. So five units represent 1000 milliliters. Always find one unit and that gives us 200 milliliters. So now let's see what is the volume of water in container X. It is in between 200 milliliters and 400 milliliters. Which means the volume of water in X is 300 milliliters. Please annotate on the diagram. Container Y is the same as container X, but the volume of water in it is different. The volume of water is 400 milliliters. Do the same to container Z. Calculate the number of longer lines of container Z. When we do that, we get five lines, which represent five units. So five units represent 500 milliliters. One unit represents 100 milliliter. So the volume of water in container Z, which is in between 200 and 300 milliliter, so that gives us 250 milliliters. Therefore, the container with the most amount of water is container Y and the least is container Z. Hence, the answer is option 2. Question 13. A box contains 10 cents and 50 cents coins. The total value of these coins is $3. What is the largest possible number of coins in the box? To have the largest number of coins in the box, we need to have more 10 cent coins than 50 cent coins. Therefore, we're just going to have one piece of 50 cent coins. First, convert $3 to cents, that gives us 300 cents. Subtract 50 cents from the 300 cents, that gives us 200 and 50 cents. Divide the 250 cents by 10 cents to find out the number of pieces of 10 cent coins that gives us 25 pieces. Add that one piece of 50 cents to the 10 cents, hence the answer is 26 pieces. Question 14. Mrs. Wong wanted to divide 72 girls and 60 boys equally into as many teams as possible. Each team had the same number of children. The number of boys in each team was the same. How many boys were there in each team? This question is testing on highest common factor between 60 and 72. Since Mrs. Wong wanted to form as many teams as possible, therefore we need to find the HCF of 60 and 72. HCF of 60 and 72 is 12. So this 12 represents the number of teams. To find the number of boys in each team, so we take the total number of boys divided by the number of teams, 60 divided by 12, and the answer is 5. Question 15. ABCD is a rectangle. E and F are points on AD such that AE is equals to EF is equals to FD. We're going to annotate that on the diagram itself. The ratio of the area of EGF to that of ABF is 1 is to 8. What fraction of ABCD is shaded? Let's focus our attention on triangle ABF. And what we're going to do is to draw or outline a rectangle around triangle ABF. I'm going to use green for this, so focus your attention on, on the green rectangle. From there, we can easily see that half of the green rectangle is triangle ABF. And because the base of the triangle consists of two units, therefore, the area 
of the green rectangle is two third of the whole figure. And half of the green rectangle is triangle ABF. So we're going to divide two third by two. That gives us one third. So this means ABF is one third of rectangle ABCD. And one third of the figure is eight units. Therefore, the whole figure consists of 24 units. We still have part of the shaded figure. Now I'm going to use black to outline the remaining shaded area. And that shaded area consists of 8 minus 1, which is 7 units. Therefore, the total shaded area for, of this figure consists of 8 plus 7 units, and that makes 15 units. Hence, the fraction of ABCD being shaded is 15 out of 24. Reduce this, we get 5 out of 8.